Well, well, your childhood dream is coming true. You've been selected as one of the volunteers to go to space as a tourist. It's time to pack your bags. Must check the airline, uh, strike that out, make it spaceship luggage restrictions. And trust me, the low coaster airline rules down on Earth are nothing compared to the do's and don'ts for the International Space Station. A regular mission to the ISS lasts six months, so any ship going up there brings supplies for the astronauts already there. And it's not just some vital materials to keep the mission running, but also crew care packages. Those are meant to make life among the stars more comfortable and include something nice from the crew members' homes or the support staff. There's a weight limit of around 11 pounds, and the size of the package is 9 by 16 inches. Food can be inside, but anything that can produce crumbs isn't welcome. Perfumes, aftershaves, mouthwash, and anything in pressurized cans like shaving cream aren't allowed. And in case you were wondering, video games can't be in your crew care package. There could be some problems with batteries up there. Hmm, so no video games for months? I might reconsider my astronaut career. Clothes are good to go, but only if they're 100% cotton. One more thing that takes off with the spaceship is an official flight kit. It has around 120 pounds of flags, patches, stickers, and other merch. And no, it's not for sale in case we do find life on Mars. These items from NASA, commercial partners, and international organizations are supposed to come back to Earth to be used as souvenirs, museum exhibits, or awards. And, of course, you'd have to send NASA an official request and they'll decide which items and how many can go. Now, life in space would be sad if you can't bring something that reminds you of home, right? Well, NASA's got you covered. You can also bring a personal preference kit on your mission. Don't get too excited, though. It's just around the size of a lunchbox and can fit a bit over 3 pounds. PPK was introduced during the Gemini program, when two people could fit into a capsule instead of one, like before. Back then, personal items had to go inside a gray nylon bag with a drawstring. Astronaut Wally Shira chose to pack his bag with 20 gold medals, 5 silver medals, flags, patches, and a Florida hunting license. I wonder what plans he had for his time in space. His colleague, Michael Collins, who went on the first mission to the moon, brought three flags with him, among other things. Years later, he took part in a NASA poll on Twitter and shared that he wished he had brought coffee and a good book to read. The more popular choices for PPK are family photos, ball caps, t-shirts, pins, and other things with logos of universities or teams and other memorabilia that mean something to them but remain a secret. Many crew members also bring musical instruments that later stay on the space station. One astronaut even got an alto saxophone for his birthday in space. That one must have been tough to hide. Another popular carry-on choice is camera gear. The views up there are too good not to capture. So, you finally choose the particular photos of your relatives to take with you and which should stay on Earth. You reach the ISS, embrace its residents, and naturally, your next wish is to take a shower after the trip. But don't get your hopes up. Water doesn't flow in zero gravity, so you won't be able to take a refreshing shower up there. Plus, water is pretty heavy, and it would be pretty expensive to send rockets filled with it into space. So, astronauts use pre-moistened wipes or towels with liquid soap to wipe their hands and faces. Another wet towel can serve to clean the rest of the body. But what about hair? Well, meet your new friend, the rinseless shampoo. You can't let splashes of water escape and mess up the electronics, so you gotta use a straw-like nozzle to run the water through special bags made of foil and plastic. Most of the water used for it goes back into the air conditioning system. It gets filtered and recycled to be used for drinking. Now, astronauts do brush their teeth, but even that simple task requires some skill in space. You'll need to attach the toothpaste tube to a wall and then squeeze a tiny bead of water over the toothbrush. Then you can brush your teeth like you do on Earth, squeeze some more water, and wipe it off with a towel to clean the brush. And oh, there's no sink to spit into, so you'll have to take a couple of sips from your water bag and swallow the toothpaste with it. Boy, sign me up. All that space routine has worn you out. Time to replenish your energy supplies. 
Luckily, space food is no longer mashed up in a tasteless mix and packed in tubes we've all seen in movies. Space food advanced along with space technologies, and now astronauts have a diet similar to yours down on Earth. They can eat fruits and brownies in their usual form. When someone on the ISS wants to snack on mac and cheese, they just need to add some water to it. There are no fridges up there, so you can't bring your favorite ice cream, and all other foods must be properly stored. It mostly comes in plastic packaging or cans. To prevent your meal from flying away, that packaging comes with Velcro patches and can be attached to a tray or table. There's a convection oven, so those lunches among the stars won't be as cold as outer space. Astronauts get three meals a day, and nutritionists make sure they're all well-balanced. You can choose between coffee, tea, orange juice, fruit punches, and lemonade when you feel thirsty. Fizzy drinks don't fizz in freefall, so you can't bring soda. There's ketchup, mustard, and mayo to spice up your diet, but the salt and pepper only come in liquid shape. Otherwise, they clog the air vents and other equipment or get stuck in the astronauts' eyes, mouths, and nose. Yep, we already know crumbs aren't welcome in space for the same reason. But what about bread? One option is to replace it with tortillas. Another option is to sneak a sandwich on your spaceship without anyone knowing. John Young tried it once, but the crumbs were a disaster, so he couldn't enjoy his corned beef sandwich at all. You could also wait for the scientists to find a solution. They've been working on it for a while. A German company called Bacon Space teamed up with the German Aerospace Center and a bunch of researchers to create the perfect dough and find a way to bake it right in space. They need a special oven, and its surface shouldn't heat up over a certain temperature. So far, the astronauts have successfully baked cookies on the ISS. It took way longer than it would in a regular kitchen, but the result was worth the wait. The whole station smelled like cookies. Speaking of smells, they can hang on for years in the space station. And you just can't open the window and air the room, you know. So even a non-toxic material can give off odors that could tamper with the astronauts' work or even make them sick and put the mission at risk. That's why NASA has its own chief sniffer, also known as Nostril Domus. His work is to smell all objects that will be in the habitable zone of the ISS. Now, you can't wait to journal about everything you've learned. Too bad pencils aren't welcome in space. The lead could easily break off, float away, and cause some major drama. A regular pen wouldn't work in weightlessness, so a special pressurized space pen premiered back in 1968. There are around 80 models of it now, and dozens of them are currently floating on the ISS. It's been one busy day in space so far, and your mission is just getting started. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.